Having just looked at how AMD's current generation product stack measures up when it comes to 1080p gaming, we're now going to do the same with Nvidia's GeForce 900 series. If you haven't already watched that video, I strongly suggest you check it out first. From the red team, we found that the Radeon R9 380 or R9 390 were the best value options for 1080p gaming, thanks to their superior performance to price ratio. The R7 370 also did very well, though we feel it's just a little too slow for high quality settings at 1080p. The R9 380X wasn't bad either, but with a higher cost per frame than both the 380 and 390, we decided against recommending it at this point. Today, we'll be revisiting the second instalment of our 1080p gaming video with the same 9 games. This means that 2013's most hyped first person shooter has been included, as is 2015's least hyped shooter. An action adventure for just blowing things up, the best game ever created based on a blockbuster movie series, a nuked console port that made everyone talk about The Witcher 3's graphics, a game based on a bonkers 1979 Australian film, the only game that we know of that was officially released twice, a game that was legitimately good a dozen versions ago, and the game that won big at this year's Game Awards. Testing takes place exclusively at 1080p using a Core i5-6600K processor with the latest graphics card and system drivers under Windows 10. For almost all of the games, Fraps was used to measure frame rate performance and we recorded 90 seconds of gameplay in each game. The only game where we didn't use Fraps was Rainbow Six Siege as the built-in benchmark works nicely. Finally, all graphics cards used were clocked according to the default NVIDIA specifications and overclocking performance won't be taken into account here. The GTX 960 averaged 55 FPS in Battlefield 4 at 1080p and with a minimum of 45 FPS it was very playable. Even the 950 did well as it managed to keep the frame rate above 41 FPS and went on to average 48 FPS. Still, the jump up in performance from the 950 and 960 to the 970 is massive as it managed to average 92 FPS and never dropped below the 76 FPS mark. The GTX 980 was faster again, but it was the GTX 980 Ti that delivered the next significant performance boost. Batman Arkham Knight played really well on the GTX 960s with an average of 60 FPS and a minimum of 49 FPS for the 2GB model, while the 4GB version only afforded us a single extra frame. Despite the 960s doing better in Batman, the 950s struggle with a rather low 37 FPS minimum frame rate, which is surprising given the reasonably strong 50 FPS average. Doubling the average frame rate from the 950 is the 970 with 100 frames per second. The GTX 980 might have been on average 9 frames faster than the 970, but it was just 2 frames faster when comparing the minimum frame rate. Call of Duty Black Ops 3 is another game where we see around a 50 FPS average for the GTX 960, and again the 2GB and 4GB models deliver the same result. Moreover, the 950 does surprisingly well once again, as it never dipped below 39 FPS, which is impressive given the quality settings. Still, for twice the price, roughly twice as much performance can be had for the GTX 970 as it averaged a silky smooth 84 FPS and never dipped below 71 FPS. Despite the large open world environments, Fallout 4 plays nicely with the 960, allowing for an average of 54 FPS with frame drops no lower than 47 FPS. The 950 also never dropped below 42 FPS and was good for 48 FPS on average. If sub 60 FPS performance isn't your thing, then perhaps the GTX 970 will impress at 1080p as it averaged 95 frames and never dropped below 79 frames. The GTX 980 wasn't much faster than the 970 and it was the GTX 980 Ti that gave us our next big performance boost. Just Cause 3 is one of the more visually impressive and exciting games to come out of 2015. Despite the huge open world and impressive graphics, the game plays quite well on a 960 at 1080p. Granted, we are well short of a 60 FPS average here. Just Cause 3 plays very nicely with a 40 FPS average though. Still, for console crashing performance, the 970 delivered 67 FPS on average, while the 980 was noticeably faster with 76 FPS. The 980 Ti went on to render 91 frames per second on average, and the Titan X made an impressive 102 FPS. Unlike Just Cause 3, we found Mad Max to be one of the least demanding big name releases of 2015. Here we see that the 950 can average 55 FPS without dropping below 48 FPS at 1080p with all the in-game quality settings maxed out. 
In fact, the 950 does surprisingly well in this title, as it was just 9 frames per second slower than the 2GB 960. Speaking of which, we do see a reasonably large difference between the 2GB and 4GB 960 models here. On average, the larger 4GB card was 5 frames per second faster. As expected, the 970 still delivered a huge leap forward as it never dropped below 101 frames per second, which is well above the 69 FPS average of the 960. Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege plays quite well on the 960, though at times the frame rate does drop as low as 39 FPS. Interestingly, while the 2GB and 4GB versions of the 960 delivered the same 39 frame per second minimum frame rate, the 4GB model was 5 FPS faster when comparing the average frame rate. Perhaps the most stunning game of 2015 is also one of the most optimised, as the 960 is able to average 50 FPS while never dipping below 46 FPS at 1080p using the maximum in-game quality settings. Even the 950 performs well with a 44 FPS average and a 40 FPS minimum. Still, serious gamers will much prefer the 970 as it averaged 83 FPS and never dropped below 77 FPS, making it only slightly slower than the 980. The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt is without question the most demanding game we have tested, and as a result, even at 1080p, the 950 and 960 aren't really able to deliver playable performance. Of course, Hairworks is enabled, and turning it off will see the 960 return to playable performance. Those wanting to enjoy all the eye candy will be better off with the 970 with an average of 48 FPS, while the 980 was much faster, rendering 57 FPS on average. The power consumption figures are aligned with the performance numbers seen when testing with Fallout 4. The 950 was only slightly slower than the 960, and as you can see, it consumed only slightly less power. The big jump from the 960 to the 970 in terms of performance translates to a lot more power consumption on the 970's behalf. That said, the jump from the 970 and 980 to the 980 Ti isn't as significant as you might have expected. The Star Wars Battlefront power consumption figures back up what we saw when testing with Fallout 4. Keep in mind, these are entire system consumption figures, so contrary to what some might believe, a good quality 500 watt power supply is ample for powering the latest Intel Skylake i7-6700K processor and the mighty GeForce GTX Titan X graphics card. Before we look at the cost per frame numbers, let's just summarise the performance seen in the 9 games tested. On average, the GTX 950 was good for 44 FPS, which is surprisingly fast considering we tested using the maximum quality settings. Still, for a smoother gaming experience, you'll want the 960, which averaged a healthier 51 FPS for the 2GB model and 53 FPS for the 4GB model. Of the 9 games tested, the 4GB 960 was noticeably faster than the 2GB model in just two of them, Rainbow Six Siege and Mad Max. As was the case with the R9 380, the 4GB 960 model cost us $20 more, so it's probably worth getting over the 2GB model, though be aware for the most part there's little to be gained at 1080p, but of course this could change in the future. The jump in performance from the 960 to the 970 is massive. On average, 62% more performance was had when compared to the 4GB 960, and this is a staggering figure. Taking all the pricing data into account, which graphics cards represent the best value at 1080p? As you can see, despite being slow, the 950 actually represents quite a strong price per frame ratio, so for those on a tight budget, this is your best option. Just be prepared to scale down a few quality settings. The 2GB 960 also represents excellent value, as we found previously, and with an average of just over 50fps, it comes in at a cost of $3.72 per frame while the 4GB model cost $3.96 per frame. Despite being $130 cheaper, the 962GB actually costs slightly more than the 970 per frame, thanks to the 970's vastly superior performance. In fact, the 970 turned out to deliver the best price per frame ratio of any current generation NVIDIA GPU. As was the case of the high-end AMD GPUs such as the 390X, Fury and Fury X, we found that the 980, 980Ti and Titan X all come at a price premium that makes them rather poor value at the 1080p resolution. Therefore, this leaves us with the 960 and 970 as the best value options in Nvidia's product stack, and both work really well with all the AAA titles released over the past few months.
NVIDIA has been quick with their game ready drivers, providing their customers with excellent support. That said, NVIDIA can be quick to love and leave their customers as Kepler based GPUs are often forgotten when it comes to game optimization these days, leaving mighty graphics cards such as the GeForce GTX 780 Ti much slower than they ought to be. Not great if you invested 700 US dollars just two years ago. Now that we've collected all the 1080p data from AMD and Nvidia's current generation GPUs, I bet you'd like to know how they compare. Leaving out the low end GTX 950 and R7370 as we feel they're a bit too slow, along with the higher tier products that reached a point of diminishing returns, leaves us with the GTX 960 and GTX 970, along with the R9 380 and 390. Bang for your buck, there's no going past the 2GB R9 380, though surprisingly the GTX 970 does very well in our tests, coming in ahead of the 4GB R9 380, 390 and the cheaper GTX 960s. Sorted by performance, we're again surprised to find the GTX 970 just a fraction ahead of the 390, which comes at a slightly better cost per frame. The results really aren't that different to our in-depth 22 game GTX 970 vs R9 390 comparison published a few months ago. That said, back then we did look at 1440p performance and due to AMD's driver overhead they are at a slight disadvantage when testing at lower resolutions such as 1080p even with the support of a Skylake Core i5 processor. In that particular comparison each card won the same number of games and the overall average frame rates worked out to be exactly the same. To the dismay of many, we went with the GTX 970, though we were quick to point out gamers could happily go either way. Therefore, the R9 380 is the clear winner of the $200 graphics card battle, while we still feel the GTX 970 gets the nod as the best $300 graphics card, though this battle isn't nearly as clear cut. Finally, for those of you who want to study the graphs in a more practical format, we've uploaded them all on our forum at hardwareunbox.com, so be sure to check that out. I'll provide a direct link in the video description. Thanks for watching another Hardware Unbox comparison. I'm your host Matt and I'd love to hear what you guys think in the comments. Don't forget to hit like, hit subscribe and I'll see you next time. Yeah.